Well, welcome back to a special edition of Restoring Home, where we talk about faith, parenting, marriage, and today I'm going to have a special discussion with men, about men. And so I'm going to share my heart with you uh, who are listening about some things that I've been wanting to say for some time, and I think now is the time to bring it up, to talk with men about being men. Um, there's a special passage in the scripture that just has always stood out for me. Uh, it's when it says that Jesus set his face like flint towards Jerusalem. One translation has it that way, where he made a resolve, a determination that he was going to Jerusalem. He had been, there had been an attempt to dissuade him many along the way, but he had decided and set his face like flint that he would go. And I like that imagery of him having a square jaw, his eyes were locked in and he was moving that direction. Nothing could dissuade him. And it reminds me of what I have heard is Israel's ancient war cry, Rak Chazak. It's the cry that would, they would, they would uh, chant, they would make before going into battle. And it has the meaning, as I understand it, something of the idea of, of sort of locking in, making your mind up, setting, tensing every muscle ready to charge and then charging in with no sense of the possibility of defeat. It's, I'm going in and I'm going to win. Rock Kazakh. And I think we need that in our men today. There's something that's settled in that's sort of mediocre, that's lazy, that's soft in character and body. There's something in our culture that has uh, led us to believe that we can be um, haphazard, we can be uh, sloppy in our manhood, that we don't need to focus or hone or work hard at it, but just sort of whatever happens, happens. And I want to challenge this mediocre approach, this haphazard, this lackadaisical approach toward manhood, both in ourselves and as we consider passing it on to our sons. And I want to challenge it today. I want to challenge you today to reconsider what it is to be a man and to move up many notches in our approach towards being men of character, men of God, uh, men as we were supposed to be, bearing the image of God to the earth. And so I want us to think in terms of Rakhazak. We are going to set our hearts and our faces like flint. We're going to make our resolve not to back down, to back away, to let up, to slow up, to turn, but to stay steadfastly in the direction of victory in bringing the image of Christ and the image of God to the world. We're going to, I want us to focus on becoming men. There's a, a website, and I don't necessarily promote the website, but their slogan I really like. It's, um, it says, North Men, a guild of northern master craftsmen. And the pictures, the songs, the whole package that's there is just stirs something within me of being a master craftsman, of being the kind of a guild of master craftsmen, a community, a family, a, a fraternity of those who, are, who's, who are, have the resolve towards be the very, being the very best, being masters at something. It just stirs something down in me. And it's, I think it stirs something in all of us men that we want to be strong. We want to be we want to be able to bring something to the table that matters. We want to be a master of something, to be, in, to be uh, the best or our best at some things. Something in our soul is just stirred by that idea. And so there's no room for mediocre in us. Men who live mediocre lives don't live as men. They live some boyish state, um, grown up in body but inside still very immature, unfocused and I would say boyish, even though they may be uh, considered uh, mature or grown up in many other ways. Our culture is taking a very serious uh, stab at doing away with the kind of manhood that I'm talking about, the kind of resolve that I'm talking about. And it, is chipped, it has chipped away and is undermining the efforts uh, towards righteousness, towards the man of God doing a very good job, and your sons and my sons and my grandsons and yours are going to be affected by this profoundly and negatively 
unless you and I step up our game a lot, a whole lot. We cannot live the way our fathers did or our grandfathers did. We cannot be the typical American male. We cannot live the, the way that our, those around us live. We cannot live the way those in our churches live. I'm challenging you at another level. I'm challenging us to go to another level. In fact, I'm challenging us to go to another place in our faith, in our pursuit of manhood, in the way we will live, the kind of people we will be. I'm not saying be better Baptists, better Methodists, or better Christians, or whatever. I'm not talking about that. This is something completely different. I'm talking about a new caliber of men who will pursue righteousness and pursue God and pursue His image and be disciplined in character and be regimented in, do, in making sure that the things happen that need to happen so that they can be built up to be strong, to be loyal, to be faithful, to be righteous, to be lights in a world, to be wise, to be discerning, to have a deep wisdom about them, to have strength about them that is attracting, that draws others in. I'm talking about becoming a different kind of person. A new, an old kind of person in a new age. And it's going to take more than just um, pep rallies. It's going to take more than reading a few books. It's going to take a lot more. It's going to take daily pursuit. It's going to take rock kazakh. You're going to have to set it in your own heart that you will pursue this every day in the quiet of your morning when nobody's looking, when, it, when you can get away with doing less. You alone, you and you before God are going to have to make your choices to set your, your face like flint that you will not be dissuaded from your Jerusalem. You will not be dissuaded from doing whatever it takes to make it to the goal to become the righteousness of God on the earth. It's going to mean doing some things that are uncomfortable. It's going to be putting away some things we need to put away. It's time to put away game playing, gentlemen. It's time to put away playing games. Video gaming, playing our games, they got to go. Your toys, you got to put away toys. It's time to grow up. It's time to be real men. Real men. Mature males. Those who have higher aspirations. Those who are not living in a virtual game, but those who are, who are engaged in the, the epic reality of life. Uh, not silly men. Not undisciplined men. We can't be those anymore. We can't be these goofy um, characters that we see on television that are, represent men. They're silly. They're naive. They're, 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 there's no backbone in them. They're juvenile at best. And I'm not talking about being bullying men or, or being uh, hedonistic men, visceral men. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being gentle men and strong men. Leaders who volunteer. Um, Men who are engaged at being brave-hearted and who are pursuing a new heart, a solid mind, who put themselves in the position of being the givers, not the takers, who put others first, who know boundaries, where to step and where not to step, where to go and where to not go. Men who have self-control, Gentlemen, pornography cannot be part of your life and you think yourself a man. Immorality cannot be part of your life. You cannot be out of control in this area and think yourself a mature man, the image of Christ on the earth. You cannot. You have to overcome and you can overcome that. But it takes a man whose face is set like flint. A man who is determined, I will, I am locked in. I am locked in and I will not be dissuaded. I will pursue righteousness and I will win. There's victory there. Rock Kazakh. That attitude, that heart, that determination. 
So these are the kind of men I'm talking about that we need and you can be and I want to be. It comes with what we do in the quiet. It's how you start your day. It's how you spend your time. It's going to demand that you must be in God's Word. We have to know Scripture, and I don't mean just know about it and know kind of generally the stories. We have to baptize our minds, immerse ourselves in the Word of God. We have to know it. We have to study it. We have to... There are so many friends I have who are expert at hunting, for example, bow hunting. There are those who, they know how to make bows. They know how to string the bows. They know the, the weights of the arrows and how to make them even. And they've made their own bows. And they understand how the wood grain has to be uh, a certain direction or what kinds of wood it's made from. They have, they have this, this hunting thing down to an art. I mean, it's, it's a science and an art. They know how to pursue certain game. They know how to read the trails. They know the times of the year when the deer are going to be in season and when they're not. They understand the ducks and whatever it is they're hunting. They understand them. They even say to me, they think like a duck or they think like a deer. How can we be so expert at things so trivial and to such degree as that and invest our time and thousands upon tens of thousands of dollars and take time away from our families, our weekends, sitting in the freezing cold, the heat, the swampy wet, fighting the mosquitoes. What are, how can we invest ourselves in those things and not to the same level and more invest ourselves in the pursuit of knowing expertly the Word of God? I think it's time for a kind of man who says, I will become, I will hunt for God. And I will become expert in the weapons of warfare against darkness, against the powers and sources of evil in the world. And I will learn to be expert at them and how they work. I will master those because I'm involved in a larger hunt, in a larger battle that is real and eternal, with long-lasting consequences for myself and others. It's time we stop playing our games. I'm not saying we can't go hunt. I'm saying the focus of our lives has got to shift. It's time for a new man. And I'm asking you, I'm calling for, please, some of you, all of you, but some of you, if this is resonating with your heart, take action. I think it's resonating with a lot of men. I see it. I'm seeing it in some books. I'm seeing it in some literature. I'm hearing guys talk about it. I, I'm feel, when I'm with men, I'm hearing them say, yes, I want to be more. I need to be more. There's something else. What is it? Someone lead me there. Someone show me the way to go so I can lead my sons to this. I don't want them to be mediocre. I don't want them to be uh, scooped up by the world and, and pulled away by all of the craziness that's out there. I want my sons to be strong, and I want to be stronger. I want to be a great father. Lead me. Show me how. There's a stirring among us men in the world. Maybe it's stirring in you. It is stirring in me. And I think the place for us to begin is very simple, not easy, but it's with this. Start telling God. Tell Him what's in your heart. Tell Him, God, I want to be this new man. Lead me. Lead me. And you pray that every day. So that needs to be, set your face like Flint, Rakazak. Go in there, lock in, tense your muscles, firm your grip, focus your mind. And every day, God, I want to be the man you want me to be. Help me. Help me. And you listen. You watch to see where he leads you and move into that. I'm confident that he will take you into his scriptures. I'm confident he will take you there. Secondly, I'm confident he will take you to prayer. But not 
prayers that are just thank you for the food or here's my wish list or would you help this sick person or that sick person. We have got to become masters of prayer. There's so much more there. Just like the guys I mentioned earlier who are bow hunters or who hunt for a certain game. They could go out and take a, a bow and pull a string and shoot it, but they work at it and eventually they get a feel for their bow. They know something, they know about the weights of arrows. They understand how the arrow even bends as it takes off through the air. They understand wind and, and they have things, uh, they sprinkle dust in the, uh, to see which way the wind is blowing so they can gauge the wind. They have sights and other devices. They practice with it. They become expert at it. Let's become expert at prayer. Men, let's figure this out. Dive in, go deep, understand more about it than just here's what you do, God help me, thank you, whatever, goodbye. We've got to go in. And lastly, I think one thing, or, or in addition to this, I think one thing we've got to do is not only become hunters in search of God and warriors of prayer, but we have to become devoted at mastering marriage. We need to find out and, and, be, and, and understand the art of loving a woman well, so, such that her, she, her glory shows. How do you love a woman so well that she glows. Master that. Understand her. Figure that out. Do whatever that, that is required to do that. We need to become masters at marriage. Where are the men who will do this? It will take time. It will take self-sacrifice. It will take humility. It will take uh, for, asking forgiveness and apology. It will take listening and learning and talking to others. It will mean that you have to focus on that instead of football. Focus on her instead of your, your things. It means that you will have to work when you want to rest. It means you have to focus and listen when you want to go away. It will be hard. Rock Kazakh. Set your face like flint. Tense yourself. Commit yourselves. Focus yourselves. I think it's time for a, a, an era in which men become pers purposeful and strategic in gathering together to discuss warfare and, 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 a, and, and become an expert on spiritual, on dealing with spiritual darkness instead of video game silliness. We need a new generation, a new era of men who are the kind of men that God intended when he made the earth. Not just males, but men of character, of deep spiritual insight, commitment, and loyalty to the God of heaven and his purposes on the earth, who put themselves last, who give sacrifice, the real heroes. We need those men. And so in this message, I have that in my heart and I'm seeing it happening. I'm, I'm catching on the wind. I'm catching the rumblings. It's happening. Men are, God is turning hearts this way. Young men and older men. There's a stirring. I hope you're part of it. If you are, then rock hazak. Stay with it. Fight that fight. Join me in it. Join the others in it. Be faithful because God is stirring and he's going to raise up a generation of those kind of men. I hope you'll be among them. I hope I'll be among them as well. And if you're interested in knowing how to lead your sons into that, into manhood, um, I'll be sharing some of that information afterwards. I have some material there after, in the, uh, after the video. You'll see in the notes there, there's some material there that might be useful for you to do that as well as some other sites of websites that you can go to to get inspiration, encouragement, and maybe some more definition for this whole idea, this whole movement that's beginning to occur in the hearts of males who want to be men of character. May God bless you, gentlemen. I hope that you will take this to heart. 
I hope that whatever stirring is going on in you, that you will not let it fall fallow, but that you will nurture it, that you will embrace it, that you will pull it in, and that you will hold tight until it bears the fruit that I know the Spirit of God wants it to bear within you. Oh, we need to band together. We must. The days encroaching upon us are dark and evil. But we will not be defeated because we will hold to the hand of Him who is righteous. Victory is on our side. Victory is on the side of the righteous. I am confident. And I choose to be among the righteous. May God bless uh, you and bless me to stay with our commitment toward that end. May God bless you in your home as you lead your children, you lead your family, and you walk holding the hand of God who is our Savior. God bless you. And I'll see you on the next Restoring Home.